Hello there and welcome to this live stream in which I am going to be talking to you about physician associates. Uh, my name is Rob Newton. I am a physician associate working within the NHS and I'm also senior lecturer in physician associate studies at DMU. And as part of that role, I'm also deputy program leader for the uh, physician associate MSc studies course. So in this live stream, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about physician associates, who we are and the roles that we have within the NHS. And then I'll go on to talk to you a little bit more about the physician associate programme at DMU and some of its key features. Uh, I am happy to reply to any uh, comments or queries that you have. So any comments at all, post them up and I will answer them as I go along. So to begin with, who are physician associates? Well, um, we are a relatively new uh, professional group within the NHS. Um, I think the earliest physician associates in the UK sort of started working around sort of just over 10 years ago. Um, but compared to other professional groups, um, as a profession, we have expanded very quickly. Um, so when I qualified as a PA five years ago, there were around 200 PAs in the UK. And I think we're now looking at nearer to 2000 PAs in the UK. So um, what is it we do? Well, um, we are trained in general medicine, so similar to doctors and other medical professionals. And um, from that training, we work in hospitals and in the community setting as part of medical teams. Um, now, unlike doctors, we have a slightly different role within those teams. So we are what is described as a dependent practitioner. And that means that we can't work in full isolation. So wherever we work, we will always be working under the um, under this sort of uh, supervision of a named consultant but that's not to say that we have to spend all of our time in the room with that consultant so we can see our own patients um, but we always make sure that there is a supervising uh, consultant around who we can discuss patients with and seek advice from. So the point of physician associates really are to um, diversify and enlarge medical teams within um, both NA within the NHS, both in secondary and primary care. And um, even before the COVID crisis hit, um, medical teams were struggling with workload and, um, and being short staffed. And so physician associates were seen as a way of supporting existing healthcare teams. And um, another thing that's particularly useful about physician associates is that um, we can often improve the continuity of care for patients within those medical teams. Um, and that's because um, junior doctors as part of their training regularly rotate from one medical specialty to another. And um, the idea of that rotation is that they gain experience in lots of um, different clinical settings. But it also means that when they move from one specialty to another, they take their expertise from that specialty with them. The aim of physician associates is that because um, we don't rotate in that way, we will stay in a particular clinical specialty for some time. So when new doctors rotate into that specialty, the physician associates will have been working there for a while. They'll know how the specialty works, how the department works. Um, and so they're able to support sort of junior members of the team um, when they first rotate into the department. And... Um, in my experience, junior doctors have always been quite appreciative um, when they've gone to a, a new ward or um, a new area and there is a physician associate um, working there to support them and help them settle in. So what is it we do? Um, so physician associates are trained to uh, take medical histories from patients. Uh, we can carry out physical examinations on patients. Um, we can um, form differential diagnoses and management plans for patients. Um, and there's no real limitation on who physician associates can and can't see um, in terms of patients. So we can see acutely unwell people or we can see patients with long term chronic diseases. Um, PAs are trained to do a number of different um, diagnostic procedures um, and um, we're also able to um, interpret sort of basic diagnostic studies as well. So we can interpret things like blood results and things like that. Um, 
a significant part of my role as well is also providing patients with um, health promotion and disease prevention advice um, as part of my clinical role. So, so that's what PAs do. Um, is there anything that PAs can't do? Well, the answer is yes. Um, at the moment, there are a couple of quite big limitations on the scope of practice of PAs. The first is that physician associates cannot prescribe medications. And the second one is that PAs can't request um, imaging studies that involve ionizing radiation. So in other words, we can't request x-rays or CT scans. Um, whilst that is, it puts some limitations on the role at the moment, although most PAs find ways of, of working around that, you know, asking colleagues to prescribe things and things like that. Um, hopefully this should be rectified in the future. So um, one of the reasons why PAs can't do these two particular things is that PAs currently don't have statutory regulation. Um, and in order to do those skills, professional groups really need to have that degree of regulation. The good news is that PAs are in the process of getting statutory regulation. And it's anticipated that roughly by this time next year, physician associates will be able to join a statutory register. And um, the registration process will be with the General Medical Council, which is the same organize, organization that regulates doctors. Um, once that regulation takes place, um, it will um, safety net the profession, but also safety net the public. It will make sure that physician associates uh, meet an appropriate level of standards. And um, once we've got that regulation, it will hopefully mean that the scope of our practice can increase. And we hope that that will ultimately lead to us getting the ability to be able to prescribe and to order these diagnostic studies, um, potentially with additional training. Um, so speaking of training, let's now think about how people become a physician associate. So. Um, to begin with, in order to become a PA, you need to have a relevant undergraduate degree. So that will be um, a degree in health sciences or life sciences. Um, on completing that degree, um, you then need to apply for a postgraduate two year physician associate studies course. These courses vary a little bit around the UK. So some universities offer a postgraduate diploma over the two years and some courses run a two year master's degree. The DMU course is a two year master's degree in physician associate studies. And during those two years, students will be taught medical sciences and sort of clinical reasoning skills. And during that two years, students will also undertake 1600 hours of clinical placement. So that can be in GP practices um, or within hospitals. Um, and those are all in the East Midlands area. Um, but that's um, an essential part of the two year programme. On completing the physician associate course, regardless of where a student studies, every student in the UK, in order to join the professional register, needs to pass a national exam. And that exam currently is run by the Royal College of Physicians in London. The exam comprises um, two parts. So there is a 200 question multiple choice examination. And then students also need to undertake a um, 14 station clinical examination. And that's called an OSCE, an Objective Structured Clinical Examination. And um, th that OSCE can be thought of um, as a bit like um, working in a surgery for a morning. So you will see 14 patients, one after another, with a range of different problems and you'll be assessed on your ability to diagnose and treat those patients appropriately. If you are interested in, um, in becoming a physician associate, I really strongly um, recommend looking at the Faculty of Physician Associates webpage, and um, that is found on the um, Royal College of Physicians website. So that's www.fparcp.co.uk. 
Um, it's a great place to start if you're considering a career as a physician associate. It will tell you um, lots about the role. It will give you examples of different places where physician associates are working. And it will tell you much more about the structure of physician associate training and what to expect as part of that training as well. So once PAs have qualified, um, they can work in a whole range of different uh, medical specialties. Um, so most medical specialties in the NHS now have PAs working in them. Um, I, there are a few that didn't, and I believe that interventional radiology got their first PA last week, um, which was one of the last specialties not to have one. Um, PAs work in GP settings, in community hospitals, in mental health settings, in secondary care services. And one of the beauties of uh, the PA studies um, is that PAs are trained as medical generalists. And that means that really they can be fitted into any healthcare setting and they can be molded, their training, their CPD can be molded according to the needs of that particular medical uh, setting. So um, that's really helpful because it means that they can undertake specific tasks relevant to that medical specialty, but also because they're tra trained as a medical generalist, if they need to go somewhere else to work, um, they have those generic medical skills that can be applied elsewhere as well. So um, in my situation, for example, um, I work in paediatrics. And so since I qualified four years ago, I've mostly worked in um, with children with acute illnesses. Um, in terms of progression, some PAs choose to go into a particular specialty and stay in that specialty permanently. Um, so, for example, I can't see me ever working in anywhere other than paediatrics. But because we have that generic training, if we want to move to a different medical specialty, that doesn't involve a lot of retraining to work in that specialty. Because we have those generic skills, we can just apply for a job in that specialty and over time they can train us up to do the additional tasks that they would like the PA to do within that particular medical specialty. So, um, like I say, I work in paediatrics, but if I suddenly decided I'd had enough of paediatrics and I decided I wanted to work in cardiothoracic surgery, I would just look for a job in cardiothoracic surgery and they would then train me up to undertake the cardiothoracic specific things that they wanted me to do. And that's where the majority of the career progression is um, as a PA. And it's, uh, it's something that appealed to me. Um, unlike um, doctors who will train, become a doctor, and then will start to specialise in a particular area of medicine, if they decide they want to move to a different area of medicine, that involves a lot of retraining. With physician associates, because of our generalist um, training and because of the roles that we undertake we can just apply for a new job if we decide we want to work elsewhere and that kind of appeals to me quite a lot. If you want to find out some more information about the different places in which physician associates work I would recommend having a look at the jobs.nhs.uk website um, which and if you type in physician associate into the search box you'll see some examples of physician associate jobs and it'll give you some idea as to where PAs are working and what kind of tasks they are undertaking. So I'm now going to move on and talk to you a little bit more about the uh, DMU physician associate program. So um, this is a very intensive programme. So essentially, we're trying to teach you about medicine in two years. So it kind of makes sense that we're going to run the course very quickly. So it's a very intensive course and it runs full time, Monday to Friday, nine to five, and that's all year round. So we don't give our students any holidays to speak of. They don't get a long summer break. They get an occasional two weeks away from university. Um, the course starts at the beginning of September. And in addition to the nine to five, Monday to Friday, we expect our students to be doing a significant amount of additional study in their own time. So what I usually tell the students is if, the, if you're not doing a minimum of 50 hours of study a week, then you're not going to be able to keep up with the course. So it's really important that uh, people who are considering applying for this course appreciate the demand um, that will be placed upon them um, by becoming a physician associate student.
And for that reason, also, we recommend that students don't take up part time work alongside this programme, because we recommend that any spare time that students have outside of the face to face teaching hours um, should be spent studying and consolidating that learning. So um, I have a slide available which shows you the, um, the structure of the first year of the programme. And you can see that just here. So the PA programme runs over two years and this shows you the structure of the first year. In the first year, students spend their majority of the time either undertaking online learning or coming into university for face to face teaching. And these show you the modules that students undertake in the first year. So to begin with, students will complete a, um, an intensive anatomy and physiology course and will then move on to study general medicine. So that will cover the, uh, the pathophysiology, diagnosis and treatment of a range of sort of core conditions. So in general medicine, you'll cover things like cardiology, respiratory medicine, gastrointestinal medicine, renal medicine, things like that. In the second term, that module is replaced by specialty medicine. And in specialty medicine, you will look at some of the, um, the more specialist areas. So things like obstetrics and gynecology, ear, nose and throat, dermatology, ophthalmology, things like that. Throughout the duration of the first year, students undertake a module in clinical and professional skills. And uh, in that module, students are taught how to um, take history information from patients, how to perform a range of different clinical examinations, how to perform um, procedures on patients. So things like taking blood, inserting intravenous uh, cannulas, urinary catheters, nasogastric tubes, giving injections, suturing, a whole range of different procedural skills. In this module, students are also taught how to interpret diagnostic studies and um, how to communicate with patients. So explaining conditions to patients, explaining procedures, and potentially doing things like breaking bad news to patients as well. Also in the first year, students undertake um, primary care placement. That starts a few weeks into the course um, with students going out a day a week to spend a day at a GP practice. Obviously, because students start that placement very early on, the expectations of them on that placement aren't very great. Um, it starts off with them mostly observing um, the GP or other members of the primary care practice. But as time goes on, um, they'll get the opportunity to start taking histories from patients and start examining patients. So we find that that clinical exposure very early on in the programme um, supports their studies later on. And students find it a really enjoyable and really valuable experience. And later on in the module, students also consolidate that with a module in community health, where they will cover topics such as mental health, uh, sexual health, infectious diseases, and various things like that. So if we move on now, I can talk to you about the second year of the programme. Um, this, the second year of the programme at DMU is spent almost entirely out on clinical placement. Um, and so we mentioned that 1600 hours of clinical placement that students need to accrue, and this is when they accrue those hours. Um, Placements are structured, so students are given a timetable at the beginning of the year, which will have all of their placements on it. And during that year, they will ro rotate through primary care, community hospitals, they'll spend some time on general medical wards within the hospital, and then they'll also work in certain specialties such as mental health, paediatrics, general surgery, and obstetrics and gynaecology. Uh, they'll also spend some time in the emergency department, so seeing how patients present to hospital with acute ill health. In the second year, alongside the clinical placement, students will be given a research supervisor and they will complete a research project um, during the second year. And at the end of the second year, students also submit a clinical portfolio. And that provides us with evidence that students have um, achieve the competencies, the skills and the knowledge that they need to um, qualify as a safe practitioner as a physician associate. On completion of year two, students then undertake the national examination and um, assuming they pass both aspects of that national examination, they are then able to join the professional register 
and to work within the um, National Health Service. So let's move on now and I'll talk to you a little bit more about the DMU programme. So students often want to know about course fees. Um, so for the 2021-2022 intake, um, I believe course fees are going to be set at £9,250 per year. Um, currently, our students do get a um, student support allowance from Health Education East Midlands to help with some of their studies. Um, we don't know for definite that we have to apply for this on a year by year basis. So we don't know for definite that our students are always going to get this. But currently, our students get um, £5,000 over the two years to put towards either their course fees, course materials, or to um, put towards traveling to different placement locations. Um, in terms of the entry criteria and the selection criteria for the DMU program, um, we ask for students applying to have a 2-1 uh, undergraduate degree or above in a, a relevant undergraduate degree. So things like biological sciences, biomedical sciences, medical sciences, or they may have done things like nursing, pharmacy, things like that. Um, as part of the application, students must also complete um, an enhanced disclosure and barring um, service application form and must pass appropriate occupational health screening as well. When students apply for the program, they do it online and they submit their applications online. They will then be invited to a selection event. So because of COVID, like many other things, um, those are currently taking place online. But as part of that selection event, that will involve part, partly a traditional interview, but we may also set students sort of small tasks to do in order to assess their suitability for the programme. And selection events will take place um, throughout the spring next year. So I'm happy to stop talking there and to field any comments or questions that, um, that people may have. So um, if you have any comments, uh, feel free to post them up. Ah, so we have one here. So um, is the Physician Associate MSc worth choosing uh, compared to MSc Advanced Biomedical Science? Okay, um, I think really the answer to that really comes down to where you see yourself working in the future. Um, so obviously I'm biased towards the Physician Associate Studies degree, um, but my understanding is that the, the biomedical science degree would lead, is more likely to lead to things like lab-based or research careers, uh, whereas the Physician Associate degree, you will ultimately be working in a much more patient-focused way. So you're more likely to be face-to-face -face with patients working in clinical settings. So things like GP practices or um, on wards or in the emergency department. So you'll be dealing sort of more directly face-to-face -face with, with uh, patient complaints. Um, if you are interested in the MSc in Advanced Biomedical Science, um, we have an online chat at the moment and I strongly recommend um, going on there. Some of my colleagues from the Advanced Biomedical Science team should be available and there should be somebody there who's able to answer any questions you have about that programme. Um, so somebody said, I have necessary healthcare experience, I've worked in five. Okay, so yeah, unfortunately, um, in order to do the PA programme, we have to be quite strict as to the nature of the undergraduate course that people have undertaken. So um, that's partly because we have to follow certain guidelines at a national level from the Faculty of Physician Associates. So they um, stipulate that um, students need to have completed a relevant undergraduate degree in, um, in a biological or biomedical um, science um, subject. Um, that is quite important as well, just because of the pace of the course that we do, we have to assume that students have a certain level of knowledge in terms of their anatomy and physiology, biochemistry, um, cell biology, things like that, in order for them to be able to complete such a large amount of study in a short period of time. So unfortunately, we do have to be quite strict about the, the subject matter that undergraduate degrees are in. Um, how many places are available on the course? So, yeah, good question. Um, 
at the moment um we are have 23 students in our current cohort um i think we are hoping to increase those numbers slightly in the future um i think we're hoping to look ultimately at increasing that to approximately maybe 30 students in an intake um we the way in which we like to teach the course we need to make sure that we are supporting students throughout the process so as i've said already it's a very intensive program and students have a lot of um conflicting um pressures on their time so we need to make sure that we're able to support them on a one-to-one -one basis so we try to avoid having too large a, a cohort to make sure that we can provide that individual support to students. So that's partly done through the personal tutors, but we also make sure that the clinical and professional skills that we teach are done in small groups. So that gives us the opportunity to make sure that um, students get the one-on-one -on -one tuition and support that they need in order to learn these really important skills like examination skills. So what are the job opportunities like for PAs and how are PAs able to progress in the profession? That's a good question. So um, job opportunities for PAs are looking really good. Um, as I mentioned, the number of um, PAs has gone up exponentially in the last kind of five years or so. And the reason it's gone up is because the demand is there for the students. So the reasons why universities are um, setting up courses to train PAs is because um, hospitals want to have PAs working with them and GP practices want to have PAs working with them. Um, so Again, I would recommend looking at the NHS Jobs website because it'll give you some indication of the demand for PAs. If you do look at it, I recommend you look at it over a period of time because more jobs tend to be advertised at certain times of year because employers know when PAs are about to qualify and that's when they tend to advertise more jobs. Um, but job opportunities are, are good. Um, Throughout, I often tell my students that to consider the PA course a bit like a two year job interview because you're going to be on clinical placement for the whole of the second year and because you're going to be rotating throughout a range of different medical specialties. Um, it gives people the opportunity to see what PAs are capable of by having a student with them. So. Um, We've had situations in the past where um, departments in the hospital or GP practices have advertised jobs for PAs at the end of the PA programme because they've seen how good the students are and they want to employ those students in their practices. So I would say job opportunities are very good. And in terms of how PAs are able to progress in the profession, um, it depends on what you want to do with your career, really. So um, like I say, I the thing that appeals to me is I like the idea that I could move into another medical specialty very easily. Some people like the idea of moving up, advancing, taking on more responsibilities, getting more money, and you can do that. Um, so most PAs start on an agenda for change band six or seven, but there are increasingly band eight physician associate roles and higher. And there are also a couple of examples in the UK now where physician associates have become partners in GP practices as well. So that just shows how positively they're taking the role um, on. And when are interviews given out? So um, we are, my belief is we're going to be staggering the interviews over um, the next few months. So basically we'll be releasing interviews periodically once we have received enough applications to start offering them. So it's not necessarily that we will have a certain cutoff date and then have interviews after that. We will offer interviews at a timely manner uh, periodically through spring next year. OK, so I believe we're coming to the end of this live stream now. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining me and I hope you have found the information that I've given you useful. Uh, there is a, um, a live chat going on um, as well, so please feel free to visit that. Um, I will be on that live chat um, to answer any questions, specific questions that people have about the PA course until 6 p.m. So if you have any further questions, do feel free to field them to that chat 
and myself or my colleagues will get back to you with um, appropriate information. So thanks again for watching.